So lately, there's been a few technologies that have been of interest of, to me. One of them is the wireless EEG headset. Um, this is by Emotive, and it allows you to re actually read brain waves, and you can use this information to control other devices. Another, another interest right now is home automation systems, and I've been working with the Raspberry, um, R-A-Z-B-E-R-R-Y, um, daughter board that works with the Raspberry Pi and it actually allows you to um, control Z-Wave devices um, and it interfaces with either mobile devices or with your computer so there's a lot of possibilities with it. Um, while working with both of them separately I came to the conclusion maybe it would be interesting combining the two. What if I could turn a light on just by thinking about it? So this in this demonstration I'm going to be turning on lights with my mind. This is my Raspberry Pi with the um, Raspberry Z-Wave daughter board installed on it. It's actually pretty an easy install. It just sits on the GPIO pins and it comes with some software. The nice thing about this um, system is you can actually communicate with it over HTTP posts so you can send post requests to it and this is what allows you to turn the light on and off. A wall across from my Raspberry Pi is my porch light. The, the Z-Wave software that's sitting on my Raspberry Pi is already configured to communicate with the module that my bulb is screwed into. The nice thing too with the Z-Wave software, it provides a web interface that you can um, control your devices. And with this web interface, it's actually plugged into a REST API that the Raspberry team has put together. And you can actually plug right into this REST API by making web calls. I'm going to demonstrate this right now. Um, so with this current web address, it should turn my light off. Um, you see the device is 4, so that's the, f the 4 is the, the actual node that the Z-Wave module for my bulb is on. And if you see on the end, it says set zero. That means when I set it to zero, it's going to turn it off. So I'm just going to hit enter, and it turned my light off. And to turn it back on, um, it requires the value 255 for the set. And if I hit 255, it turns my light on again. So this can be adapted then with our Emotive wireless headset and we can actually make restful calls. When you purchase an Emotive Epic headset you can also purchase the SDK along with it and with this gives you the ability to build applications that can interact with the headset itself. In this case I'm using a modified version of the Emo State log script that was provided by Emotive but I've included the libraries from Apache, the HTTP client library and the HTTP core libraries so that my application can make RESTful calls out to my Raspberry server. Continuing down, I'm going to mention that this application can also be run using Emo Composer. If you look, there's a case one, case two, and you can actually switch between if you want to test out your script. I was using Emo Composer because I didn't want to wear the headset all the time. And with Emo Composer, you can pretty much just input values and it, it, it's sort of like an emulator for the headset. Emo Engine, which is the, and I've set the option to one, so obviously it's, it's set to use Emo Engine. It's connecting directly to the headset, pulling that information. And in this case, I'm using this through the control panel, so the emotive control panel, and within the control panel, that's where you can you can actually train different actions like push and pull, and with that you can imagine pushing an object away from you. In this case, I imagined turning my porch light on, and I've been constantly kind of training it to do so. Continuing down, as as it cycles through, here is where it's, it's constantly cycling through the information that's coming back from the headset. What I'm looking for right now is the cognitive class 
that Emotive provides. And with that, that's where the push and pull, fade, and those sorts of actions that um, you've trained the headset within the control panel for. Continuing down, and you can see it's actually right here. It's I'm using this just to log. Now, now for the headset, I set I set it up to respond to a push. So if I'm doing a push, and I trained it, so I trained the push action to my thought of turning on the light outside. The push action within the within the the cognitive class the cognitive get current actions class um, the push action is actually the integer of two one is is a neutral state so if your your mind is clear that's one but two is push I believe three is pull um, that sort of thing so right now it's checking to see if the the current action is a push that I'm doing here I also want to make sure the actual force or the actual power that I'm sending with my thought, I want it to be above a 0.5. So as long as it's, a, as it's above 0.5, it'll turn the light on or it'll turn it off. I also have a timeout set. So with the timeout, I, want, I made sure that there's kind of a 10 second interval because with, currently with the way I've written it, the push turns the light off and on. So if you held a thought for too long, it, you pretty much would have a strobe light and it would be turning off and on. In this case, I've included an interrupt, and I'll show that later um, with, the, with another method and that will prevent the light from going into strobe mode. And it gives you kind of a 10 second timeout so you can wait 10 seconds and then turn the light off, wait 10 seconds, turn the light on. And you can see it's actually, and here, rest post. So this is where it makes, the, makes a restful um, post to, to my local server, um, my local Raspberry Pi. Um, that's using the Raspberry daughter board to communicate with my Z-Wave device. And then I've also included the timer start, so it, it starts my timer. So you make the request, it starts the timer for 10 seconds. Now continuing down. Now let's actually get to the, the methods. So with the rest post method, which I've declared here, it builds the, you know, builds the client using the Apache HTTP client library, and then it does a it does a post request to my local server. In this case, I want to see what the current value of if it's set to 255 or if it's set to zero, so that I know if it's off or on. If if you look at this, I I did show you the the web address, but in this case, I've U done some URL encoding because it doesn't like some of the brackets and some of the parentheses so for this to work with to actually make a, a web request I did some URL encoding but if if you remember I had that dot set at the end of of the URL in this case I took it off and I added a dot data dot level dot value so this will actually just return the value 255 or 0 from that particular device. So if the if the light's off, then it's zero. If the light's on, then it's 255. And then it returns with that value. And it gets the it gets the status or gets that particular integer, um, the zero or the 255. And I've in, I also, you know, continuing, I have a switch here that checks to see if that particular integer status that it got was a zero or a 255. In this case, you know, this will turn it on. And I sh kind of showed this is based off of when I showed you that web ag web address beforehand. Here's where it's it's set to 255. So it's kind of it's almost the same thing as typing it in, but in this case, the application is just executing those commands. And then going down to this the timer here and this is where it 
starts a 10 second timer so if you look up there up at the beginning it it looks to see if the timeout is set to false and it's declared you know timeout is actually declared up here um, and it's set to false but if you go down here it sets it to true so it's not constantly running through that particular those particular commands every time it makes makes it gets information back from the headset so it waits 10 seconds and then and then after this is where you set 10 seconds and after the after the 10 seconds is up it sets it back to false so that again you can it will run through this part and it will turn the light on or off if you take some time and look at each method and break it down, it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. Anyway, let's see it in action. So I put on my EEG wireless headset and I'm going to demonstrate um, the light turning on and off. So here goes. So I'm going to start up the program here, the software that I have um, created. So I'm going to start up the software and you can see now it's detecting the information that's coming from um, the EMO control panel and being sent through the EMO engine. Um, so yep, I turn the light off, I'm going to focus again. There's a 10 second delay. Then I'm going to turn it on again. Okay. So let's wait 10 seconds again. Show it off. Try pushing it. And then another 10 second delay. And I'll wait and try pushing it again. Let's focus again. So, as you can see, I'm able to send signals using the EEG wireless headset to turn my porch light on and off. And that, my friends, is how you turn on lights using your mind. Anyway, down below in the description, you should find my blog as well as my GitHub account with information on how I put this together. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to send them and I'll try to get back with you. Anyway, happy hacking!